time for Alma Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. The widespread precipitation event currently ongoing across the eastern quarter of the nation will continue to have potential holiday travel impacts as that storm system and frontal boundaries responsible for the inclement weather continue to push eastward. Widespread heavy rains are likely across the east, bringing some much-needed rains to the areas from the Appalachians, southeast, mid-Atlantic, and northeast that have had much below average precipitation over the last several weeks. On the northern edge of this heavy precipitation, a white Thanksgiving is possible as accumulating snows are likely from New York into northern New England with the heaviest accumulations in excess of six inches possible from central to northern New Hampshire into Maine. Overall, travel conditions will improve significantly by Thanksgiving Day across nearly all of the nation. The exceptions to this will be over the northern Rockies and northern High Plains. Now closer to home, sunshine with temperatures creeping back into the 60s this week. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. Let's talk about some of the goings-on in the town. Mountain View Church is hosting the annual street Thanksgiving meal today from 11 to 3 at the Granada Shopping Center. Uh, we're set to feed about 1,500 people. We have free socks to give away. We have bikes to be raffled off. Um, it's just going to be a great day of pouring and loving in our city, on, uh, on our city. Pastor Anthony Torres speaking on Facebook. If you're in need or know someone who is, then by all means, make sure they know this is going on. Also, if you want to help, Torres says they have plenty of food, but they are in need of something still. If you want to help, we need water and we need um, drinks. It's the annual street Thanksgiving meal today from 11 to 3 at the Granada Shopping Center. The city of Alamogordo is partnering with Alamogordo Main Street, Alamogordo Small Business Development Center, and the Alamogordo Center of Commerce to present the Small Business Saturday event. Mayor Susan Payne made a special proclamation. Small Business Saturday is actually going to be Saturday, November 25th. Um, We're going to have uh, lots of sales, lots of uh, giveaways, and, and lots of celebration. We encourage all of you to come down and join us and support your local small businesses. Lots of activities and special promotions. The event is Saturday, November 25th from 10 until 4 along Alamogordo Main Street, otherwise known as New York Avenue. Saturday, the Alamogordo Toys for Tots will be having an event. We heard from Gina Lawrence. November 25th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Big Lot parking lot. I am going to have the Grinch. Santa Claus and his elves out there. And we're going to have carnival games for the kids. Just a family-friendly, fun event. Alamogordo.nm.toysfortots.org has all the information you need. Toys for Tots is collecting toys now through December 20th. Please drop off new toys at any of the following drop-off locations. Tularosa Basin Regional Dispatch, Otero County Sheriff's Office, the Alamogordo Police Department, Otero County EOC, and the Otero County Administration Building. Help donate new toys to give children a better Christmas season. Saturday, the Singles of Otero County will be meeting up for a late lunch. And that will be at Rizzo's there at uh, about uh, 1500 block of uh, North White Sands Boulevard. And again, that's Saturday the 25th at 1.30. Cliff with the Singles of Otero County speaking with Crazy Radio. The event is open up to adults 60 and up. If you have any questions, please call 575-430-4499. The annual Christmas parade is scheduled for December 9th at 6 p.m. The theme is going to be Cowboy Christmas, so we're kind of looking for like um, things like cowboy hats, you know, a float with horses. We're actually like really excited. If you want to register, call 575-434-6770. Well, today is Wednesday. Let's get our weekly report in from Love, Inc. Hey, good morning, Alamogordo. This is Susan with Love, Inc. of Otero County. I just want to start off by reminding everybody that Love, Inc. will be closed beginning Wednesday, November 22nd, and we will reopen on Tuesday, November 28th. If you need something in the meantime, please give us a call at 575 439 Five six eight three, and we will be checking our messages periodically. This allows all of our volunteers and staff to enjoy time with their families for the Thanksgiving holiday. 
Also, just to let everybody know, we do take donations of used furniture. We do get many, many requests for those. We do have someone that picks up and delivers. So if you are looking for a place to donate furniture, we would sure appreciate those donations. As I said, we get lots of requests. And right now, particularly this time of year, we're really getting a lot of requests. So if you are so inclined, just give us a call and we would be happy to come and get those for you. Of course, our food pantry is very busy right now. Lots of requests for that as well. And we do have people that are reaching out to us that want to adopt a family for the holiday. We are working on those now and we'll be able to provide those names for you in about a week or so. And then, of course, our backpacks are still going on. We will take a break for Christmas. So we're always looking for donations of that as well. This is a hard time of year, as everybody knows. Christmas and Thanksgiving and the holidays do get a little tough, and particularly for our ministry. So we would sure appreciate those donations. If you want to know how you can help us, just give us a call at 575-439-4812. And you can speak to our office staff, or ask for me, and I would be happy to share with you the needs at this time. Until next week, everybody have a blessed Thanksgiving and a blessed week. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alan McGordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. AlanMcGordoTownNews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you, and we bring it to you directly. Plus, local sports, cultural arts, and events. Online, AlanMcGordoTownNews.com. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. With its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side. Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. This Thanksgiving, the USDA is encouraging you to remove seven habits from your kitchen to ward off foodborne illnesses. Caitlin Spradley joins us now with more information. The USDA is reminding everyone to practice good food safety habits during Thanksgiving to avoid you or your guests suffering from a foodborne illness. First, wash your hands and kitchen surfaces before, during, and after food preparation. Second, don't use the same cutting boards and utensils for raw and ready-to-eat foods, especially when preparing raw meats and vegetables that won't be cooked. Third, thaw your turkey in the refrigerator or in a cold water bath instead of leaving it out. Fourth, don't cook any meat or turkey in an oven below 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Fifth, use a food thermometer to check that the thickest part of the turkey breast, the innermost part of the wing, and the innermost part of the thigh has reached an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Sixth, the USDA recommends against stuffing your turkey since this often leads to bacteria growth. Finally, don't keep your leftovers for more than a week. This is Caitlin Spradley with the New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau, AgMinute. Also, don't leave your food out sitting too long. Be sure to refrigerate all perishable food sitting out at room temperature within two hours of being cooked. The Rio Rancho City Council has voted to defer action on a problem property while they work with the owner on a cleanup plan. The city police department has responded to multiple calls to the former Jewish center on Grande Boulevard, including two fires which led to the roof collapsing. The building has sat empty for years. The fire marshal and building and code enforcement have issued multiple violations to the building owner. Now the owner has requested to postpone the issue until the next city council meeting, stating he's working on a contract for demolition. Rio Rancho City Manager Matt Giselle says the city says they are on board. This would allow for us not to expend the public's funds, for uh, the public's money, for the property to come in uh, to compliance and the building to be uh, demoed. If the property owner is on track for demolition, uh, we could then look to withdraw this item. Rio Rancho Mayor Greg Hull says this permits the owner to come into compliance. I received a lot of concerns from constituents, a lot of concerns on this building. It is a building, and honestly, I want to say this, it doesn't have anything to do with the name that's on it. It's an attractive nuisance. It's attracting crime. The city council will revisit the topic during the December meeting. Josh Castleberry, founder and chief executive officer of Castle Coffee of Rio Rancho, is in shock after a car crashed into the front of his store on Friday morning. 
Castleberry said he was working at the store when the incident occurred. His back was turned to the front of the store when he heard a crash. At that time, a line of people stretched through the shop and every table in the house was filled, except for the one in front of the window that the vehicle went through. I don't know how to describe it other than like, just sound like a, like a huge like gunshot or like a small like bomb going off or something like it was just a big pop castleberry speaking with krqe everyone just kind of froze and i turn around and see that there's a car like a foot into my shop after speaking with authorities on the scene castleberry said he learned a woman had mistakenly pressed the gas pedal thinking her vehicle was in reverse but instead of backing up the driver jumped the parking barrier and drove straight into the store just from what i was was gathering is that she thought she was in reverse and her foot got stuck and she was actually in the, the drive. In a similar yet unconnected incident on Friday afternoon, another business, this time in downtown Albuquerque, was also struck by a vehicle. A car crashed through a fence and through the front wall of Cap's Diner. Daniel Garcia, a server at the diner, said this to KRQE. I heard a loud crash, um, and then as I was coming this way to check on what was going on, the vehicle plowed into the restaurant. Fortunately, no one was injured in either of the crashes. A new report from the American Lung Association shows New Mexico ranks low in terms of early diagnosis and screening for lung cancer. The rate of new lung cancer cases is 34 per 100,000 people. That's the second lowest among all states. That sits below the national average of 55.6, and the rate has improved 31% in the last five years. Still, the land of enchantment ranks 47th. The report shows 31.5% of cases are not receiving any treatment. Indigenous people, especially, are most likely to receive no treatment. Tobacco is the leading factor for lung cancer, and the smoking rate in New Mexico is 13.3%, compared to a national average of 13.5%. Joanna Struther, the senior director of advocacy for the American Lung Association, spoke with KOB. We know that current and former smokers have a higher risk of getting lung cancer, but also anyone exposed to secondhand smoke, radon, air pollution can also get lung cancer. And just like with other types of cancer, screening and early detection are the most important. According to the American Lung Association, those at high risk for lung cancer can reduce death by up to 20 percent simply by having an annual screening. We see that especially for lung cancer screening, New Mexico is really low. Only 1.9% of New Mexicans have been screened for lung cancer. The national average is only 4.5%. American Lung Association officials encourage people to talk to their doctor. They say to ask about possible risks and screening for lung cancer. Sports and weather are next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. College football this weekend. Utah State at UNM. Jacksonville State at NMSU. And, of course, this Saturday in high school football, St. Mike's faces Robertson for the 3A state championship. Portales faces Lovington for the 4A state championship. Roswell faces Artesia for the 5A state championship. And Cleveland faces La Cueva for the 6A state championship. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Mostly clear tonight, mostly sunny tomorrow. Your high today in the basin, 57. Low tonight of 35. High tomorrow, 60 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies today, mostly clear tonight, mostly sunny tomorrow, winds gusting as high as 16 miles per hour. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 44, wind chill is going to make it feel like 26, low tonight of 23, high tomorrow, 43 degrees, wind chill is going to make it feel like it's 26 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. Also, check out the crazy KELH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. That concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.